Yo, Dakota, welcome to the channel, my man. What's happening? It's been a minute. Glad to see you. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you too, dude. Um, really, I just kind of want to give you the stage um, and kind of just explain, you know, what it's been like inside the, the closing Bible. It's been, when did you join? It's been a few months now. August 8th. I got that. Uh, I got that date embedded in my mind. I have a whole note section on everything that's happened since. Dude, that's phenomenal. You got you got tabs. <laughs> <laughs> but cool, dude. Kind of just, I guess, give the floor, kind of explain like who you are, where you're from, like what you do. Yeah, so my name's Dakota Gum, Dakota like the state, gum like chewing gum for uh, anyone who's ever been on the phone with me. Uh, where I came from, just got out of high school, knew I did not want to go to college. Uh, high school, middle school, elementary already wasn't for me. <laughs> What's another four or eight years? So I knew I had to figure something out and I ended up getting into manual labor. I started off in brick paving, worked my way up, was able to figure that stuff out pretty easily. From there, I transitioned. I did a couple of things in between, like small business startups. I had a clothing line with a couple of buddies coming out of high school. Uh, we flopped on that. <laughs> I had a couple of uh, different business ideas that are irrelevant, but I was just jumping around manual labor, spending all night on my laptop trying to figure out, like, how do I get into the sales game? Like, where's my next play, basically? And I actually came across your TikTok videos and I was watching them. I'm like, damn. This kid's from Illinois. I'm from Illinois. There's a little bit of familiarity, uh, a little bit of trust, because I've been burnt in the past by, uh, I guess for lack of better words, just some crappy programs that didn't really do much. And uh, I gave this one a shot. I actually went and I hit Garrett up on Instagram and his DMs. And, you know, he gave me an opportunity, asked what I was looking for. And it's been, uh, it's been a complete 180 flip since. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people kind of get it stuck in their head. Like once they get burned by a certain program, they never buy one in the past. I guess, how did you kind of get over that in your head? Like I've been burnt in the past. Why should I do this? Well, the first thing, the first thing I did was uh, I did some intensive research on yourself. Actually, I went through and I checked, you know, anything I could about you, every single social platform, uh, just to make sure everything lined up. You know, there's, there's a lot of people you think you can trust out there and, it wasn't until, you know, I started DMing you a little bit and it was just like, you're very transparent, man. There wasn't anything that um, any red flags that I was really being thrown. So I, I figured, you know, why not give it a shot? And <laughs> God damn, was that the best decision I've ever made? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I remember when we were actually on like our, you know, quote unquote sales call um, and you're like, dude, like, I just don't have the funds. Like, I don't think I can pull the trigger. And we left the call and then you text me right after and you're like, I don't give a fuck. I'm doing it. Like I'll make it happen. Uh, what kind of went through your head like after we spoke, and why were you just like, "I'm doing it. I don't care." Yeah, so that's uh, actually a pretty funny story. I think I was on my way to get a haircut. I was actually pretty busy that day. I was like in a rush, and uh, I was in the car with my girlfriend, and I was just thinking about it. And you know, I was just I was going through the motions in my head, and we were on that call. Everything it sounded good. I, I'm thinking about everything else that I've got to take care of. I had actually quit my uh, nine to five job like last November. We're talking like, you know, early August at this point. So I've already, you know, I started up a small uh, mobile detailing business and I was I was doing decent, but it's like I didn't have money to, to just throw out and just hope that it was going to, you know, do something for me. So I, I really I ended that by the time we ended that call, I was just like, you know, I need to think about this like this just it's not the right timing. I can't. I, I can't make this work financially right now. And uh, I ended up uh, giving them a call back. Like as soon as we hung up the call, I remember I was sitting there and I just looked out the window and like, after like three minutes, I just kind of shook my head. I sent you a text or something and I, I, I rung you back and I'm like, listen, man, let's get this figured out. <laughs> I'm ready to, I'm ready to make it happen. And that's something I've always been real big on. You know, there's a lot of people out there that, Oh, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll, I'll work on that next week or I'll, uh, I'll save up a little bit. I'll work my ass off and then I'll be able to pay for it in the future. It's like, no, you got to make it happen now. You got to figure out whatever way, you know, it's go ask family if you need to, whatever it may be, make it happen. If you know it's in your best interest, don't push it off. That's something, you know, I was doing for a long time with a lot of different things, giving myself every excuse in the world. And, uh, you know, it's just, it comes to a point where you got to just take that step, man. You got to just go for it. And that's why I called you back. And like I said, man, seriously, the best move I, I could have ever played right there. Yeah. That's about the biggest compliment I can receive. 
And the second you like settle that and you're like, I don't care. I'll make it happen. Like I'm hungry. I'm like, he's going to be so good at sales. Like so good at sales. Cause you were just so hungry. Like even I've talked with some of the people that are on your sales team currently and they're like, dude, like no one does more dials than Dakota. Like he's a beast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, like on average, like in the closing bell, I guess just so everyone knows, like, Usually you digest, like what we do is like we we train, like we have sales training and we also place people into like eight and nine figure companies. Um, and I'm like, he's like, how soon do I get placed? Like what does that kind of look like? I'm like, it depends. Like usually people in about two, three-ish weeks, like usually that's when they land a role. Three days into the closing battle, you land a sales role. <laughs> so yeah, and actually that sales role, sorry to cut you off, man. That sales role you got me into was uh, a very pivotal point for me, man. It was like, it was obviously my first step into it when I just, you know, I took every call with confidence. I'm like, I made it this far. Now I'm going to be the best at, at what I do. And I was, I was ripping calls day in and day out. I was studying. I was attending every single meeting we had, writing down pages and notes. And um, even that offer, it, it didn't end up working out because I was working. Uh, I was talking with people that were working in manual labor, which was the field I had come from in the past. That was just a very miserable time. And I didn't like my conversations back then. I didn't like them on the phone with this one. And it was super eye opening for me to get that first role, especially within three days. It gave me like a lot of confidence. And I realized like I can make things happen. Now I get to choose the direction that like I truly want to go. And I know that I'm going to be good wherever I go. And um, I ended up literally making it on my dream offer, my dream team. Yeah. I think like it's nice that that happened because I think you wouldn't have appreciated. I mean, I still think you would appreciate the opportunity you have now, but you needed that stepping stone offer to be like, all right, like this is kind of how the sales game works. Like I'm doing a bunch of dials, like I'm setting some appointments and stuff, but like that's the beauty of like being inside the closing. I would kind of an abundance of like opportunity. You're like, this is great. I will make money, but I don't enjoy having these conversations. So I don't exactly. know how long were you on that offer before you transitioned to the one you're on now? Yeah. So I got on that offer. I think my first day of dialing for my, for that first one was like, the 11th, 11th through the 15th. It was somewhere between that window. And then I got over to the new offer that I'm on now uh, through Apex with BNB Formula. Um, I got on that one September like 7th. And my first rounds of dials was September 11th. So about a month later, actually, uh, I made it to my literally my dream position, man. <laughs> it's crazy to think about still. I can't fathom. And, and what makes it like your dream position? Because not everyone knows, you know, what that company is and, and you know, everything. It's a pretty big operation. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, it's the team. It's the people that I'm surrounded with. And it's the same same attraction that drew me into the closing Bible. It's like I'm very big about, you know, show me the five people you hang out with the most and I'll show you what, you know, the next 10 years of your life will look like. Like I knew that coming out of the positions that I was in, the people I was working with, like I needed to get to that place where I was surrounded by winners. I was surrounded by driven, motivated, hungry individuals who were willing to make anything happen with the stop at no nothing mentality like myself. And I found that in the closing Bible. And from there, uh, when I had those first couple of interviews for Apex, man, I was like, this is my home. This is like, I'm surrounded everyone. Absolutely everyone on that team was exactly like me. Similar thoughts, wants to make a change in some way or another, man. And um, it was just the most comfortable transition I could have ever made. Yeah, dude. And like, kind of talk about, uh, if you don't mind, like numbers wise, like, so it, it's like a $9,800 offer that, that you were selling and you were an appointment center. Um, but it's not like, I think people have the idea of like, oh, appointment set are okay. I make like maybe two, three grand, four grand, five grand a month, maybe. Like that wasn't exactly the opportunity like there. Um, so yeah. like, what were you kind of doing like numbers wise? Like how much did you make either like per call? Like kind of walk through the numbers for some people. Yeah. So for that offer specifically, uh, it was a $9,800 package. Like you said, and commission is uh, 8%. It's not, it comes out to about 800 bucks. Um, after a PIF paid in full. So, you know, as long as you're making two, three, four sets a day, you know, one or two, three of them are showing up, one or two close, you can, I mean, 800, 1600 bucks a day for putting in the work. It's, it could be a pretty good feeling, man.
Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not too shabby at all. <laughs> yeah. um, how long did it take for um, how long did it take for you to start making like good money? Was it like instant? Was there like a huge learning curve? Yeah, so I, I kind of surprised myself when I got in. I was like putting up a lot of sets. I was also learning the ropes with like what makes a good set over there, you know. So um, I, I had a couple of deals that just weren't closing, but I was still pulling in like uh, I was still pulling in really, really good earnings, like multiple thousand per week, I'll say. And, uh, you know, it was it was super simple. Nothing, nothing changed throughout it cut that Re redo i gotta go inside i was shivering outside man <laughs> you're okay uh no so how easy was it to make money it, it was pretty easy to make money over there as long as you're putting in the work so like one thing about an offer when when you're working on an offer that actually benefits people and you know that whatever work you're putting in whatever the input is there's a direct correlation with like a positive impact in someone else's life it makes the output just kind of fall in place, right? So I'm known for putting in a lot of dials. Well, I also have a lot of passion for the program because I've seen what it can do for people. So on top of this, I mean, that's a deadly duo right there, man. When you're making 600, 800, 1,000 dials in a day and getting to talk with multiple hundreds of people, as long as you're finding the qualified personnel, um, you're able to pull in pretty good money with that combination, man. And it's it's that's something I'll always be a firm believer in, like, your input is is what you're going to get on the output. You want to slack a little bit today? Well, your earnings are going to slack a little bit today or maybe even more than that. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of sales, especially when you're driven, is it's so binary. It's like you get them to say yes or you get them to say no. You either don't make money or you make money. And you mm -hmm. get in this one conversation, there is zero ceiling as to like how much money you can make. And I think if you're the right person, like, you know, sales is the place to be. And especially if you believe in the offer, you're willing to have that work ethic because you know, like, you know, like on the other side of this, like someone's going to get a crazy ROI or like make more money or be in a better place. So you like, it's less about making the money. Like obviously the money's great, but it's also like genuinely helping people and like caring more about helping that person than making the money. Yeah. And that's one thing too, uh, that I really like about the closing Bible, the people that we've spoke with, and I don't want to throw names out there specifically and don't know what his take is on it, but I was, I was talking with one of the guys in the closing Bible and uh, he had gone through so many different interviews. And I was like, dude, why haven't you landed an offer yet? And it was quite simply just because like he didn't, he didn't know too much about it. There wasn't enough passion there for him, or he just might, have thought it wasn't the best sell you know or it wasn't gonna he couldn't see like the actual positive impact in it and just like again going with the the community and the surroundings like it's really good to know that everybody there like we're all watching out you know it's like you're only looking out for an offer that's going to change someone's life because imagine you're given you're, you're sending us to a bunch of offers that are just complete you know, garbage, you know, like there are already so many of out there. And then you're going to put people who are actually good at this position on one of those offers. And you're just, you know, you're adding to all the, all the FUD basically in the space already. Um, and that was one thing that was super reassuring for me, man. It's like, everybody is super focused on selling an offer that obviously aligns with their beliefs and views, but also is going to make a positive impact in that space. And that was super, super comforting coming yeah. in. So yeah, and that's exactly what we vet all these offers. We make sure they're actually doing numbers, like they have testimonials, their marketing's there. Like it's not their first rodeo and you're not like slinging, you know, pardon my French, some dog shit like course that just doesn't get yeah. results. Like, and there's a lot of those in the space. So I think that's one of the appeals to like working with me, I guess, is you get like, you don't have the critical eye when you're new to the game to know, is this a good offer or is this not a good offer? So that part of the piece, the puzzle is kind of like taken away. Um, and then I guess like, as you, you worked with like, you know, that specific b, &B like real estate type offer. Um, and now you, maybe you're doing some other type of stuff in the company, which I know you can't exactly explain everything, but like, how did you kind of progress in the company? And like, did that affect like, or, you know, were you making more money as you kind of moved up within the, the sales space that you were in within that company? Or what did that kind of look like? Uh, and this is just for me personally. It, it's like everywhere I've gone, I've always like my goal is to go to the top. Like I, I, 
I don't even like being around people who are, I, I hate people who settle for comfort okay I hate any like any idea of like oh I'm comfortable this is it for me um so I've just never had that mentality and all those past manual labor jobs like I was able to work my way up to the top and and understand all the bs that was going around me going on around me on like a different aspect so I just took the same mentality going in with these offers and and when I took the step into this space you know it's like if you want to get to a position make it a point you know, so I, I spent time getting to know the entire team. I threw myself out there. I'm I'm the, one of the newest guys on the team and I'm sending in the chat of 200 plus people like, let's go, let's get today, you know, and, and, and giving that energy and just like putting my name out there, not only through the hard work, but like through the helping of others, you know, and, and really making a point like I'm not here just to, just to make you guys a buttload of money and, and myself like I'm here to make a difference in my life and everyone else around me. So if they're on the phone with me, cool. If I'm working with them directly, cool. Like I want that responsibility. I've, I've DM so many different uh, of the hierarchy. I'm like, whatever responsibility you have, give it to me. I will take it happily. I was like, I don't need sleep, whatever you want. Um, and that's just the mentality I have. And I, I hope that a lot of other people are like that. But uh, for me to, to get to the top, man, it's just input. And then just like, proving you you can take on a leadership role or whatever role you want to take on without having the title if that makes sense yeah no doubt dude and like obviously you don't have to say but like what are you kind of doing like commissions wise right now like ballpark yeah so uh i i right now i wouldn't i would i would like to talk about previous months uh we're doing a lot better um like closer closer to that five figure mark but they're they're it's been a little discrepancy lately and um, you know, we're going through some transitions, I guess I'll say. So um, the output hasn't quite been there, unfortunately. And that's, you know, some things in my control, some things out of my control at, at this time, it's a little harder to speak on, but uh, back in the previous months, like when I was first getting started, like to have a, a, a $2,400, $3,200 week was not, you know, that wasn't uh, out of the ordinary, I guess, I guess I'll say. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's just for me. There are a lot of other people on the same team that were just absolutely crushing it, who were consistently doing multiple five figures per week. <laughs> like there's a uh, there's a lot of space for, for there's a lot of opportunity for um, some good earnings if you're willing to put in the work around there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And Drinking two, three K a week is like from, you know, three months or so of sales experience, two months of sales experience, like that's phenomenal in, in that shorter amount of time. Um, and then I guess to someone who's maybe in your shoes, August 10th, um, you know, August 8th, maybe their sales is new to them. They're kind of like, all right, I want to make more money. I just don't really know the method of as to like how, like, what would you kind of say to Dakota in July? Uh, stop prolonging, stop, uh, stop pushing it off. You know, if, if, if you're actually serious and you've done the research and you feel like that is a good sales is a good space for you, uh, stop waiting, stop giving yourself excuses. You know, back in July, I, I should have started then. There is no reason that I shouldn't, you know, I was already doing the research. I was already finding people in the space. There's no reason I shouldn't have been contacting them, following up and making something happen then. Um, so what I would say to, to, you know, my past self back then, like, uh, you know, if you've got that hard work, stop it, nothing mentality and ethic, you know, make action happen now. <laughs> stop prolonging it. Stop procrastinating. Stop coming up with excuses. If you have something that you, you, you are setting out to do, do it. Make it happen now. Yeah. And you obviously, you, you said at the beginning of this interview, like the closing bout was the best decision you ever made in your life. So I guess there's not much more to say there, but to someone who's maybe watched my content or is looking at this YouTube interview right now, or is flirted with the idea of joining the closing Bible, I guess, what are your, your thoughts and what could you say to that person? Yeah. So uh, anyone who just comes across this video, the thought of it, anything like, 
if, if, if you made it this far, if you're watching this video, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, send out a contact, send out a message. It doesn't have to be, oh, you know, I'm, I'm coming to join the team right away. Ask questions, you know, make a start, make make progress happen by making the start, you know, uh, reach out, see if there's anything. If you have uncertainty, ask, you know, if you're excited about something, you want to learn more about something before you consider diving in, ask, it do, what, is, what are you going to lose, you know? Yeah, and we talked on DMs, I think, two days or so. I, I, was t I remember DMing you like fucking midnight. I'm laying in bed. My girlfriend's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I'm talking to this guy. It's intriguing. Like, this guy's hungry. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, but cool, man. Um, we will we'll got to have you back, you know, on the YouTube channel, like down the road. Like you're hungry. You have so much potential and you understand like dollar signs and all that are great. But I think you understand the opportunity you have in front of you and you understand that there's more long-term ROI in the relationships and connections you're building right now than every single dollar. And obviously we want to make money in the progress or in the process, but like two years, like three years down the road, you're going to be making an ignorant amount of money. Um, and even in 2023, you know, we're what six days or so in here. I don't think there'd be any reason as to why you wouldn't be doing, you know, 20 30 grand a month and beyond 100 percent, man that's uh yeah that's it <laughs> and yeah man i, I want to i'll stop out we'll get a we'll get a you know a better meetup going and maybe get some some more of these made uh i know uh i'll be out are you are you in, I, ooh, excuse me are you in miami right now yeah yeah all right. Yeah, man. I'll, uh, I'll have to stop out there. I might be in Florida back in March or up here in March. So I'll let you know. Yeah, dude, we'll have to grab dinner. <laughs> um, awesome, man. Well, thanks again for, for hopping on. Thanks for the interview. Uh, keep on crushing it, man. And we'll catch you on the next one. I appreciate it as always, man. Thank you.